So the study I would like to talk about is entitled Amyloid Deposition, Neuropsychiatric Symptoms, and the Risk of Incident Mild Cognitive Impairment. To give you a brief background, we know that amyloid deposition in the brain is associated with an increased risk of cognitive decline or mild cognitive impairment. And similarly, we know that neuropsychiatric symptoms such as depression or anxiety are also associated with an increased risk for mild cognitive impairment. So in this study, we wanted to know if there is an additive interaction between amyloid deposition and neuropsychiatric symptoms in increasing the risk of mild cognitive impairment. We did a prospective cohort study derived from the population-based Mayo Clinic study of aging in Rochester, Minnesota, and we took 950 cognitively normal elderly persons aged 50 years and older and we did neuropsychiatric testing on them, neuropsychiatric assessment using back depression inventory and also back anxiety inventory. And we also did measure amyloid deposition using PIP-PET imaging. So we did this testing at baseline and then followed the participants forward in time to the outcome of incident mild cognitive impairment. And what we observed was that if I have depression and I'm also PIP positive, so having amyloid deposition in my brain, my risk of developing incident mild cognitive impairment is significantly increased. Similarly, if I have anxiety symptoms and I'm PIP positive, I also have a significantly increased risk of developing new onset of mild cognitive impairment. So the clinical implication would be that this study showed us that both depression and anxiety are risk factors for incident mild cognitive impairment. And the good thing about it is that both risk factors may be modifiable to some extent. So we know that, for example, in a person that has depression symptoms, we would be able to modify it and maybe to decrease the symptoms by using, for example, physical exercise intervention. By modifying these symptoms, these neuropsychiatric symptoms, we might be able to decrease the risk of incident mild cognitive impairment. We found that these neuropsychiatric symptoms increase the risk of incident MCI. So the good thing is that they might be modifiable to some extent. So for example, if a person has only mild depressive symptoms, then physical exercise intervention would maybe help the patient. But if the symptoms are more severe, then the patient would be seen by a doctor and then maybe medication or behavioral intervention might help this person. And to conclude it, the message would be that both depression and anxiety symptoms are to some extent modifiable. And if we are able to modify it and maybe to decrease the symptoms, we will also be able to decrease the risk of incident MCI.